All right. Well, there we go. And we are now live for going on uh, seven seconds. All right. So we're going to be. Hello again, everybody. Fixing to get. Uh, let's go ahead and get our recorder fired up. All right. And this is uh, going to be uh, episode 170. We made it 170 uh, episodes in. And so excited to uh, to go. We're going to be talking about forgiveness today and that is one of those skills that we we often try to say we have and try to pride ourselves on and that's going to make a step there we go and it some sometimes we're able to do it but there's better ways to forgive and a lot of men sadly we we end up holding grudges and that doesn't serve anybody anywhere at any time. And so when should you forgive? When should you forget when, and all that? And we're going to be talking about that today. And I have got curlies everywhere. <laughs> oh, well. So try not to pay too much attention to that. I do believe I've got my wild, uh, my wild eyebrow problem solved. I did some major yanking. <laughs> the other day so anywho so yeah 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 so all right so just waiting a little bit here see if we get anybody to come in which is probably not going to be the case because this is really new um i haven't done live episodes or d- just done lives in in months and months uh, actually probably a couple of years I mean, I'll, I'll do a, a live from time to time while I'm not officially going yet. I'm going to go ahead and open up my, my a beverage. So, <laughs> all right. So, if you're on the replay here and you're wondering what in the heck's going on, what's we're, I'm actually doing the a live recording of my podcast and this is going to be episode 170 so you're going to see some weird things happen that don't normally happen in the podcast like for instance you see me snapping three times i'm just putting a marker on my recorder because i'm recording this uh the audio separately so that i can edit it out and put it up on the podcast uh why do i not use it on here uh is because or why do I not use the uh, uh, the live stream version? Because uh, it's just better it is to have a a device dedicated to recording that audio. That way, this chips out, goes bonkers, starts speaking cellular Chinese, whatever. I've got a means of being able to. I've got a backup, essentially. So uh, if you see that, uh, I'll be the way I'll do this is I'll first do an intro. Then I'll give a span of uh, silence so that I can find it at the beginning of the of the show, and then we go in with the show, and the show will go for about thirty minutes or so. And uh, if we get any people who come on here, um, and uh, pretty soon we're actually going to start making requests for um, for coaching if you want to be coached and stuff. So, and I'm still trying to figure out the best way to actually do that. But, uh, but we'll, uh, that's something to be definitely, uh, to be looked forward to. And, uh, if you've ever wanted to have some free coaching, it's only will cost you a little bit of, uh, it'll only cost you privacy <laughs> to, to really, to, to po- really point that out. So, all right. So let's go ahead and get ourselves started. Someone has wronged you. Someone has taken an advantage of you, something along those lines. And it has caused a lot of anguish, consternation, other types of problems in you emotionally speaking how do you forgive them and that's what we're going to be talking about this week on episode number 170 of the relaxed mail this 
this to there, take this one, move it to there. So uh, if anybody actually asks a question or makes a comment, I can actually catch the comment. So make a little, make an adjustment, trying to get this figured out. So anyhow, all right. Hey man, hello and welcome to Relax Mail. I am your host, Brian. I am a certified men's coach and I am so pleased to know that you've been able to make it back and come into the show and hear what I have to say. And this week we're going to be talking about forgiveness and the power of forgiving and why it does a person good to actually forgive uh, another one for the transgressions that they may have made. But before we actually get into that, wanted to say, just say thank you to all the, our new listeners, our new uh, new men who have come in and that are actually hearing our show either for the second, first time, second time, or along those lines, because this show is being spread by men just like you. They are being spread by the folks who have heard this show and Something is said and they go, dude, you need to hear this guy. He's he's speaking to you and it's being shared out. And we're going to be talking about sharing this, how to share this out later at the end of the show. If you make it that far, great. Then you, uh, I definitely caught something in you that created a, created, resonated with you. And it, so it's helping you to become a, once it inspires you to want to become a better man and to be able to find out how to actually get through life without being so wound up, being so tense and all that. Now, one of the things that causes us to have a lot of that tension, a lot of that, uh, a lot of that anxiety, a lot of the the problems that we want to run from because all everything I just mentioned, tension, anxiety, all that comes from the emotions that we have. Those emotions that we have come from the thoughts that we have. So when it comes to our, our day-to-day life and our interactions with other humans, interestingly, most of the time when we interact with other humans, we're going to have somebody who does something that just, doesn't jive with us is a good way to describe describe that it just doesn't provide anything in our uh, in our scheme of of advancement and then you have people you have karens that come in you have chads that come in you have all the you know the people who think that they're entitled to something and they come in and they just they completely rub you a wrong way well, can you forgive those types of people, or can you forgive your 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 wife, your ex wife? Uh, she has decided, you know what? Never mind. I'm done with this. I'm we're out of here. I'm filing for a divorce. We're gone. I'm I'm done. And or maybe you've shown up, and she, you know, hasn't a somebody else in bed with her, you know. Do you forgive her for that? And these are questions that a lot of men all have. I can't forgive her. Well, you know, you say you can't forgive her for X, Y, and or Z. But can you can you not really? And we're, we'll, like I said, we'll be driving diving into that. But one of the things I've really have started seeing with uh, with a lot of people is that we actually do like to lean into our suffering (laughs) if that is a good way to put it we enjoy suffering in some strange bizarre way i mean someone wrongs you so you're going to make sure that you're miserable to make sure they're miserable which is funny because they're the other person is never miserable because they're not thinking of you they're not thinking of oh i wronged that person in some way they did what they did 
and they bounced out. And you're still sitting there going, ah, oh, you know, you're getting all angry and, and, and fed up and you're stomping around and, and being just a, you know, a jerk. Misery loves company is a great example <laughs> of, of that whole, whole analogy. Because, you know, if someone comes in and they're pissed off at the world and you're, you do something and they just instantly just jump on you and just, blah, 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 you know, chew on you for a little while and stomp out, out and continue on down their way. You're going, well, what the, Hey, and you're now all of a sudden mad and you're outraged at the fact that they did something that was, you know, completely outrageous. And <laughs> there's, there's so many thoughts that get mixed up in here. There's so many thoughts that strangle our, um, our possibilities and so many way times we take the the actions of other people and we make them mean something that has no bearing as to what it means. Somebody jumped on your butt for because you grabbed a cantaloupe that they wanted. Um, what what are you making that mean? Well. You're making it mean something because it, it irritated you. It made you mad. You made that mean something. But to other people, that's, you know, the, to the person who was angry and was throwing a fit about it, he was probably just, he probably just got a butt chewing from his boss or maybe it's Saturday and he just got told by his boss that he's got to come into work and he was just about to go out on, to, on the lake. I mean, I'd be a little pissed off too if, that was the case for myself. So how do you, when somebody wrongs you and we're, when I say somebody wrong you, we're not going to just go with just the general public. We're going to come in a little bit closer. So a family member who, somebody who you're going to be seeing on a very regular basis. Maybe it's a coworker. Uh, maybe he, they stole an account from you or something like that. How do you forgive those? Why should you forgive, or even should you forgive the, uh, that person who wronged you? And we're going to be talking about that and we're going to dive into it. And you may see the reasons why, or you may end up finding a new reason as to why you want to forgive, or you may come up with a completely new reason as to why you don't want to forgive somebody. There's a lot of nuances, I guess would be a good way to put it, a little different ways. It's forgiving somebody can be a very, subtle art um you have to show the one be the one who gives a amount of grace and grace is unearned forgiveness and because you know people are going to ask you to forgive them knowing darn good and well that there's a good chance that they're going to repeat the same darn thing that they did before um, cause you know, it's like once a year, almost, uh, like clockwork, you have your, uh, you have a, a cousin come in who is a drug addict and he runs off with a uh, $150 out of your wallet every time you almost, you can predict the day, you know, it's, you know, it's Christmas season because you you're missing $150 out of your wallet. You may have $500 in there, but he's just going to take 150. Why? Don't know. It's just, it, we know, we know co cousin Ralph, he, he does that. So when do you, well, no, let's, let's back her up. Why should we forgive? This is a, a question that most of us struggle with. And some of us were, have have our have our very distinct reasons either you know we're a lot of the christians well because god forgave us for our sins we can forgive those who sinned against us forgive us of, uh, of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us you know that whole that whole thing but why you forgive somebody is actually really important because if you don't if you're just, eh, okay, fine, whatever. And you don't have a reason as to why you're forgiving them. You go, there's likely good chances that you're going to, they're going to come along and reapply the same offense before because it really doesn't bother you. 
So to forgive somebody, you want to have a, a reason as to why you want to forgive. Now, most, of the, like I said, most of the time, Christian wise, it's because, well, we've been told we need to forgive, but other times, you know, we ha- struggle with forgiving a person for a foreign offense. <clears throat> And when we forgive them of that offense, we are allowing them to, we let them know that they are, have the ability to be redeemed. So there are factors that you actually want to take into account. And one is, has this dude, you know, wronged you before? If he has, okay, you don't, I don't know why you, why you want to, uh, to forgive him. There may be a reason why it may be, you know, he's an old high school friend. He's, and you, a lot of times we, when we go off and we want to forgive somebody and we let bygones be bygones, it's because we see the old person, especially if it's like an old family friend or an old friend, high school buddy, and he's just going through the, uh, hard times that's where we start to make where we actually are allowing forgiveness to be a, to be a hindrance. Actually, we're allowing the person to have a, a way out. We're giving them an out as to you're, you're screwing up here, buddy, but you know what? It's okay. You're, you know, you're, you're touched in some way. You're, you have a, a, you have a problem and you don't know how to fix it is a lot of what we, we look at when it comes to old friends, we have our thoughts. We have, we get in, essentially we get into the pool with them. If you want to know a, a good way of looking at that is why do we, we often forgive people who don't actually need to be forgiven or, or maybe if, to allow me to should on you who shouldn't be forgiven. And that is because of our thoughts. We think, well, he is, he's just, he had a troubled life growing up or he had, a, you know, a, uh, he had a mom and dad who didn't care about him. You know, that kind of falls back onto the troubled life part, but uh, he's, he's got, he's going through a lot. His wife is leaving him, you know, and all this other stuff. And we try to come up with excuses for, you know, why this person wronged us or why this person wronged somebody else and trying to convince them they should forgive, you know, Ralphie for, for running off with their $150. And when we are doing, when we're doing stuff like that and we just freely give a forgiveness away, we're still enabling them to maintain that bad behavior. If you come to somebody or somebody comes to you and is in a true state of, of repentance and they really are, (laughs) they really do feel low. They feel like they know that they screwed up and they went through and they actually give a proper line of forgiveness. And I'll, we'll be talking about that here in a moment on how do you ask for forgiveness? And you can actually use that line, those, those five steps. And there are, there's five steps to asking for forgiveness. You can take those five steps. And if somebody forgives or is wanting you to forgive them, you can follow those five lines. And you can learn from it. But if they, and the way you do that, look, well, we'll go ahead and jump into it a little bit. Why forgive somebody? If they ask for forgiveness and they are accepting all responsibility, everything that they, that was in their power and they, they did, they voiced out what was wrong. If they voice how they're going to fix the problem, And they step back and wait for you to respond. That is a good sign that they actually are 
truly sorry for what they did and they want to be forgiven. And you can give them a, you can accept their apology. Or you can, and just because they apologize, and that's another thing, is just because you accept an apology doesn't mean you forgive or you forget what they've done. And that's, uh, that's, but you also can accept an apology and not forgive them, which mixes things up again, because as humans, you add emotion and we start getting really messy, but, <clears throat> but when you, should you forgive somebody? Well, that's a really tough question to answer because the only person who could truly answer that is you. Can you forgive whoever it was for the for the fault they caused you? Whenever they let you down, whenever they did whatever it was, can you let go of the hurt that that created and forgive them? And just say, you know, all right, I, I'm forgiven. You're forgiven. Just go. It's not that you have to forget. That's one of the things a lot of people want to say is, well, you just forgive and forget. No, no, you can forgive. And actually, it does you good to forgive. You don't have to forget. No one said God, you know, is, is he... They say that he, you know, when he forgives you, it's done, it's over with, it's out, it's out of there. I don't know if that's actually the case or if he's going, yeah, well, we know that you, well, I've forgiven you this thing 15 times. I would like to think that he, you know, he forgives you each time you realize you've screwed up. Because the more we try, the better we become. And, but the more we try, the more we're going to mess it up at the same time. And if you don't try, then you're never going to get any closer though. So there's that, you know, there's, there's a, you're going to, there's not a, uh, not a give and take, but there's a, there's a balance system to that. So should you forgive somebody? Well, if you, if you can, I would, but that's again, that's me. You may not, you may go, yeah, well, I, I could forgive them, but I'm not about to forgive them because They've been wronging me for the past 30 years. And no, I'm my, my forgiveness uh, tank is completely dry for them. All right, fine. I mean, are you holding it? But if you're not going to forgive them just strictly because, you know, you're holding a grudge, a grudge is not going to work for anything. A grudge is again, you taking poison, hoping that your enemy is going to die. It doesn't, it never works that way. So when should you forgive somebody? Well, if it's their first offense and they're truly, you know, repentant, then okay, yeah. Go ahead and and forgive them if that's what you feel like doing. If you want to forgive somebody, go ahead and forgive them. If you don't, then you don't have to. And... I'm coming from a nice guy. That's something really difficult for me to fully say because I want to forgive everybody. Oh, eh, it's all right. Didn't and there's times that I really should step back and go, no, dude. Okay. Thank you for the apology. But if you want to be forgiven, you're going to have to start showing me that you're taking the steps needed to resolve the issue. And maybe that's, that's what it takes. Maybe that's what it takes for you to go off and forgive somebody is that they take, they start showing you they're serious about changing. Your wife has come to you and gone, baby, I, I'm, I screwed up something big. I thought I, I thought Michael was the one who was bringing me all the joy. And all it was is I was bored, you know, and I am, I'm truly sorry. I, it was my fault. I, I let my thoughts get away from me and I'm truly sorry. And she goes and your wife goes through and fully ap apologizes, and you say, okay, show me the proof that you're no longer going to be looking at other guys thinking, 
what they're like in bed. Help me become the better man. Tell me what I am um, I'm failing to do. And you can you can ask that, but don't expect her to always answer that. Because again, you know, with all all that t- line of thinking, that's where going down, working on your your four pillars of relaxed male, come into play because you know what you need to be doing. You are getting yourself in shape. You are making yourself a better looking uh, man. You're getting your you're getting yourself all all sculpted and, and strong and you're looking strong and you're eating strong and you act strong. And then when you're working for you're feeding your soul, then you, you know, you've, you've got a purpose. You're working towards that purpose and nobody is stepping in your way. Even if your wife does try to step in your way, you're telling her, no, if you want me to be a happy man and you want me to be ha- have a, a great time uh, making sure that I take care of you and love you fully, then I have to do my feed my soul. I have to do this. And if she's okay with that, great. If she's not, <laughs> that again, great. You don't have to be fine with it. I'm doing this and we're getting this done. And this is what fell in, you want, caused you to fall in love with me. And that's something that a lot of people just don't fully understand. But and then you have your community, which is the group of men that you're hanging with on a very regular basis. And so you don't have to be turning to the to your wife and going, and show me how, how to, to be a better man because you already know how to be the better man. You've done the the steps needed to show her. And if she t- decides that she doesn't want to be around you anymore, all right, go. All right. You've now had t- two, two bites from the, or she had two bites from the apple and she's gone on her own way. So should you forgive and forget? I don't, I don't think so. It's always better to the first time, the first offense. Yeah. I'll forgive you the first offense. But the second offense is where it becomes very telling is that's telling me, Hey, you're, you're just not really serious about it. All right. Uh, or you're just, you're something you've got, to, you've got to get your, your other problems hammered out before we, before we go any further on this. And that's where we need to have good communication. And if you're willing to communicate with somebody in a better way, that helps out tremendously and letting them know where they stand in the process of you forgiving them. So now let's flip the script just a little bit. All right. Now you've gone off and screwed something up and you are needing to ask for forgiveness. How do you actually ask for forgiveness? Now, like I said, there's five steps to this. And the first one is you talk, you go off and you take full unrelenting responsibility for your actions. All right. You tell everybody exactly what is, what is going on. Why did you screw up the way you screwed up? And you're telling over everyone, this is exactly why it went wrong. So, and you take, like I said, you take all that responsibility. Next, you voice why you're asking for forgiveness. All the wrongs that you know that you've done, you voice them and you acknowledge them and you tell them, you let that person know that you fully understand why, you know, whatever it was that you did caused whatever the problem that that you're having. So voice the wrongs that you did and why those wrongs were wrong. Then express how you're actually going to resolve that issue. That's the big one right there. It's how are you going to fix this? All right. You can go, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wreck the car. Well, I'm going to actually repair the car. You know, I'm, this is how I'm fixing it. You're talking about, how you are resolving the, the, the screw up you made. And when you're finished with that, then the hard part, especially for us, nice guys, 
the hard part comes into play. You actually have to stop talking and let the other person have their say. Let them voice whatever they want to say, and you just stand there and you just take it. All right? Whether they're right or they're wrong, doesn't matter. You take what they say and you listen. And then you wait for them to decide. They have the choice. You've done what you're, you've screwed up. You've taken the ball. You've placed it into their court and you've asked them, will you forgive me? And you just wait. And if they want to forgive you, beautiful, great, awesome, kick tail. If not, okay, you've got to figure out how to, how to fix the problem. And you don't figure out how to fix the problem just by going up to them going, so how do I fix this with you? Because that comes across as being very disingenuous. You want to be able to go to them and show them that you are truly here to, to fix, the, uh, fix the problem. And you're going to fix the problem. And so to fix that problem, you've got to do the thought work. You've got to do the actual footwork. And doing all that, none of it's easy. A lot of it's messy. And, but because you're taking the time doing the effort and taking the actions that forgiveness is going to actually show up. And when you start applying, noticing those five steps in your uh, being applied to, to you, when somebody wrongs you, you know that they're truly regretful for what they've done. And so they are actually more worthy of actually having your, your forgiveness as opposed to, just the the you know your your loser cousin who's you know, oh man I'm sorry I didn't realize you needed that hundred fifty dollars for for rent uh, I feel bad now uh, okay see he feels bad it's not that it does any problem for you it's it was again it was still all about him and that's one reason you can tell that he's probably not worthy of actually having your forgiveness and so. To just and if somebody asks you for forgiveness, you can actually say no, and you're actually doing them a bigger favor by saying, "Well, you're, I hear you, and I've taken the uh, your apology is accepted, but you're not forgiven yet." To be able to actually say that lets them know he, he screwed. They've screwed up a lot worse, and it's it's a, you can have it's going to feel. A little weird at times especially when you're just trying to go yeah no we're not we're not playing this game no more and there's times that you may have to actually do that just cut the conversation off and go no we're not doing this we're not having this no more we're going i'm going down this path you can hang right there all you want and but if you follow me you're not tripping me up anymore and you can actually put those needed boundaries into place because those boundaries help protect you from the offenses that the other person created. So guys with that, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to make this one just a little bit shorter than what we had for last week, but I still want to thank you very much for listening. If this is your first time here in the show, man, I appreciate you listening and making it all the way through the, through the episode. And if that is the case, and there was something that was said in here that you want to, to share with your your group your band of brothers please do most podcast apps these days have a share button hit that share button and share it out onto facebook share it onto twitter onto any of the other uh social media sites that you go to this helps our reach expand so it allows allows a lot of of, of people to be able to come along and thanks a lot there matt for uh for the uh for the comment awesome advice i appreciate that tremendously so there we go <laughs> that's a i like this little uh uh <laughs> this little feature here that I'm, that's pretty cool i'm i'm still playing around with uh with Streamyard. it's it's neat to be able to see each one of see those as they come up but um it is if you see have a uh have a, a brother that you know that truly could ha utilize the information that is given on this episode or one of the other episodes that you've listened to 
share that with them. You can, those same mess, uh, podcast apps, you can send through a messenger service and send it to them and it'll come up as a, just a link on in their, uh, their text messages and they can open that up and be able to listen to the episode from there. And let that guys, if you'll take this message and share it out with everybody, those other brothers and, uh, other men that you know, in your, in your life, it helps them to be able to know that there is a group of men that are working hard to try to make sure men become better, become stronger. And so to share that out does not only me a big favor, but does all of y'all a big favor because it grows that community. And the more we grow the community, the more I might, I'd be able to actually open up a, a, a group of someplace so that we can all start getting together and start, uh, start talking. So guys with that, I want to say thank you again for listening and we will see y'all next week till then. Bye.